let's get started and let's talk about this series. In this first video of the series, we're going to be building a very, very simple Spring Boot application. We're going to be tackling a basic domain, uh, which is going to be a library. So we're going to be building books, authors, uh, and a, again, a very simple domain. Now, the idea here is we're going to expose this domain over a REST API, and we're going to see exactly how to do that uh, with the assumption that you already have a good level of Java understanding and a very simple, basic level of Spring understanding. All right, so let's get started and let's actually do everything from the IDE here. We're going to be using Eclipse STS and let's get started. Let's get started with a Spring project here. Now, the nice thing about this starter is that it actually brings in the Spring initializer data. So as you can see, it pulls from start spring.io. So you don't have to go to the site. You just can uh, start this up from Eclipse and configure your project here. Now let's actually do this um, very simply here. Library as the name, Kambildung as the package, and we're ready to go. Now let's choose a stack. So we're going to naturally need some level of persistence. And for that, we're just going to use an embedded database and JPA, right? Obviously in a production scenario, you want to go for you know, a more production grade type of persistence store, but right now we're gonna use H2. Uh, we're going to use the web support. And since this is a REST API, we're going to make use of Spring Data REST just to simplify things. Obviously you can build a REST API without Spring Data REST, but this will allow us to move quickly. And then we're gonna use actuators. We're going to use basic validation, uh, Lambac. Lambac is going to be quite useful. And just for development purposes, let's use DevTools, right? This is going to allow us to keep working on our project, but not having to redeploy manually. And there we go. We're ready to go. We can uh, hit finish here and we get a full project. Now, one quick thing I want to do here is I actually want to add a new dependency. Uh, I want to add Guava. Uh, this is something I generally use, so I, like to, I like to add this into any project that I work on. All right, so Guava is in, and actually one more thing here, uh, just to simplify things, uh, we're going to exclude the dependency. Uh, we have a search J pulled in here. We're not gonna use a search J, uh, at least not for this demo, so let's actually exclude a search J entirely, right? This is gonna just make uh, our importing and our usage of JUnit and Hamcrest uh, a lot easier. All right, so we are ready to go with a simple, empty of course, but simple project. Now let's run the project. Let's actually hit run here and let's make sure that this runs, that this starts up correctly and that we don't have any issues here. So, and remember, as this is uh, deploying here, remember that DevTools is enabled. So what that means is that whenever we're making changes, we're gonna get uh, these changes immediately redeploy the project and we do not have to do that manually. All right, so let's have a look at the logs here. So one thing I'm noticing here and one thing I would actually like to change is the fact that we're getting so much log output for an empty project, right? This is an empty entirely, you know, there's nothing here. However, we're getting all of this output. So let's take advantage of the fact that we are in a boot project, right? And let's actually do something interesting here and let's tune our logging output. So what we get, what we want to get rid of is this output here, right? Let's get rid of the uh, output out of this class here and we're gonna just grab the package. Remember, we don't want to tune all of the output. We just want to tune the output of this particular class <clears throat> And also notice the level here, right? This is info. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the level uh, to warn. So let's open up application properties. Let's go with logging level. Now we're gonna paste this package. 
and we're gonna configure this in WARN level. And notice this immediately, right, gets redeployed and you'll notice that there is no longer any output out of that package. So there we go, this was the old output and now after the redeploy, this is the new output. So there we go, we got rid of that log, um, that logging output and we can start hitting this application. This is a running application. Let's, let's interact with it. Let's hit the application. No, not the recorder. Uh, let's hit the application here. So we have the application open. Let's actually hit the actuators. Remember we have the actuators running. So let's actually go to health, right? And let's see, all right, we're getting status up. So everything is good. Uh, and we are ready to go. We're ready to actually start building. Uh, but there's actually one more quick feature I want to show you before we do that. And that's just a cool little feature out of uh, the actuator framework. If we hit the, uh, the root here, right? If we just hit actuator, we get a, a nice HAL response, right? We get a nice HAL response, which is discoverable. So we can now see what actuators we actually have available. We can see, for example, that, okay, right now we have the health actuator and we have info as well. Now, obviously, if we define new actuators or if we add our own, these will come up here. So we're gonna have everything discoverable in an, just a nice navigable way. So if I now want to go to you know info, I go to info, I hit send and I get the information, obviously there's nothing here right now, uh, but you know, I get whatever information I, I need here. All right, so now let's start building. Let's start building and let's get started by defining our domain. We're gonna define a simple domain, right? We're gonna define a book. And well, okay, for a book, Let's say we want a title. Let's say that we also want an ISBN for the book. Usually books have an ISBN, of course. I mean, all books should have a, an ISBN if they're published. And because this is going to be both our entity and well, later on, we're going to expose this. First of all, let's define it as an entity. So let's make sure we have an ID here and define some very basic JPA persistence. Let's make sure this gets generated and maybe some simple validation as well. All right, so that's our persistence taken care of, right? Now, the next step is to make sure we define our setters, our getters, our hash code, our equal uh, equals implementation. All of that needs to be defined. However, we don't really want to define that manually, right? We, we, this is just boilerplate. It's necessary, but it is boilerplate. So let's make use of Lombok and the very nice data annotation here, which takes care of all of that, right? Now, if we look at the outline, right, in uh, of the class here, all of the setters, all of the getters, equal, hash code, to string, all of that is defined. All right. Uh, one more thing, let's define a no args constructor. Obviously that's necessary for persistence. So we're gonna need that as well, right? Now, again, in this particular case, we're going to see how we expose this uh, entity also as our resource. Now, obviously, you know, in a production scenario, you want those different. You want to have a different uh, representation where, that you expose via the API then you have an entity in the database, right? You don't want to have those uh, represented by the same class. However, in this very simple example, we don't care about that. We want to uh, move quickly and we want to, you know, have the same representation and that's the book here. All right, so now what do we actually need to define to actually have uh, operations available beyond just the entity side of things? Well, okay, we want to define a simple repository, right? So we're going to define a simple, simple repository. Um, 
actually let's move this to repo right and this repository of, of course is going to be using spring data jpa right we are going to be using spring data data rest so naturally we're going to be also using spring data jpa so let's extend the paging and sorting repository here we're gonna use book and the id is long and we are done that's it that's all we need in order to have our uh, persistence operations and again at this stage we have whatever spring data allows us and gives us by default right we have things like you know a find uh, all here we have find all with pagination and of course we have a lot of crud uh, CRUD operations, right? The typical CRUD operations. We don't really need anything more than that uh, at this stage. All right. So now, as we've been saying here, right, the next step is to also expose this over uh, over a REST API, right? We want this to be exposed. So we're going to use Spring Data JPA here, and let's just define... Right, because we're defining a resource here. Now, let's define the path, which naturally is going to be books. Um, and let's actually also define the rel type, the collection rel type here. Now, keep in mind, YANA defines a number of rel types that we can use. However, we can also use our custom rel types, and that's exactly what we need here. We need a custom rel type. which is also going to be books. And there we go. Now we're ready to deploy. And again, remember, this is actually something that already happened. DevTools is operating in the background here. And whenever I save in the IDE, DevTools uh, redeploys. And so now we have everything we need. So let's go to Postman and let's try this out, right? Let's try out this operation and uh, let's see. Let's see if this API is correctly exposed. All right, here we go. We're getting what we need to be getting. We're getting this HAL response where we have. Well, we don't have any books yet, right? And that's of course our next step. But we have what we need, right? We have the links that are discoverable here that make this API more discoverable. We have pagination, and we have the uh, the books here. Now, again, the next step here is to prepare some actual data, right? We want to be able to see some data in our response here. We, we don't want just an empty response. So what are, what are our options here? What can we do to prepare some data? Well, remember, this is a Spring Boot application, right? So that means that we have several options. One of them, for example, is to use raw SQL. Raw SQL uh, you know, in boot, if we define a data.sql in the class path, Spring Boot will run that and it will use that to pre-populate some data in the project, right? But that's, you know, obviously, that's, that's more well suited for a production scenario than for an example scenario. In this example, we actually want to preserve the ability and the, you know, the type safety to write Java code. So let's let's do that. Let's do it in Java, and let's actually, um, you know, let's let's do it here in the application. We don't really need a new class. So what we can do here is again a few options, right? One of them, for example, might be to use an application uh, context-aware interface, right? This interface will simply allow us to hook our own logic when the application context gets set. So we could do that, that's one option, but actually my preferred option, the, the one that I usually use, is a callback, right? Spring Boot has a very nice callback, so let's, let's define a simple component here, just a simple bin, right, data setup. And let's use this callback. This is called application runner. And there we go. We have this nice runner that notice it actually grabs uh, and allows us to use the actual arguments that we passed 
to the main method here, right? If we need them, we can use them, right? They're actually a little bit more type safe as well, right? You, you'll notice that the arguments here are an array of string, and now we get a nicely, um, you know, type safe type of class. We don't really need the arguments here, so we're not gonna use those. Uh, let's make sure that we inject our, our book repository, right? And let's now save a new book. Now, the question becomes, how do we create a new book, right? What do we need here? What do, what do we need to create a new book? Well, very simply put, we do have setters on our book entity. So we could very well use that. However, there's a nicer way that I prefer and I tend to use whenever I can, and that is the builder pattern. So we can implement the builder pattern for the book, right? We can implement that uh, manually if we wanted to, but we don't have to implement it manually. We actually can implement the builder pattern right out of Lombok. We can do that and we are gonna define an all args constructor because that's exactly what the builder pattern uses under the hood here. And there we go, we have the builder pattern implemented. We don't have to roll that out manually. So now what we can do here is we can say, okay, book builder, and we can start building. We can say the title is gun with the wind and the ISBN is of course uh, just a random, that doesn't really matter, right? And then we're gonna build it, right? Let's do one more, let's do um, effective Java and let's do, right? Something like that. So there we go, now we have two books pre-populated in uh, the application. Spring Boot will call this runner as a callback when the application starts and we're ready to go. We're ready to hit the API again and make sure that this actually works and we get the books available. So let's get that done here. So when we hit the API, we should be, we should be seeing the, the exact same type of meta information here, but we also should be seeing the actual books. And there we go. We get the title, you know, we get the books that we de we've defined here, and you know, we have total elements is now two, and nothing else changes. And of course, you know, the nice thing about Postman here is that we can actually navigate, and you know, we can, we can actually hit one of the books um, individually. All right, so now we are mostly done. I do actually want to do one more thing before wrapping up this video, and that is writing a nice, quick, little test, right? When we create this application, uh, we actually get access to this test. This just loads up the context, right? So if, if, you know, if we want to actually run this, and it's gonna take a while because it does load up the context, uh, yeah, there we go. Let's write another one. Let's write a, another simple test that just verifies, let's actually copy paste this method here, that verifies that our persistence layer works. Now, again, to be clear, this is not developed in a TDD fashion, right? This is not, this is an example, so we went kind of in a linear fashion, uh, but this is just a nice little way to actually write a test, right? Even though this is not TDD. We can certainly explore TDD in a future video where we're going to extend this API and we're gonna be adding uh, authors and probably other, um, you know, enriching, enriching the domain. But for now, let's just write a simple test here. Right, let's make sure that we inject our um, book repository and let's just say that we're asserting, right, we're asserting that uh, the, let's say the find all method is actually returning some data. So this is gonna be, um, it's, gonna, it's not gonna be empty, right? So we're gonna go with empty
All right. There we go. All right. So now let's run and let's make sure that this find all is not re returning an empty list or an empty uh, iterable, right? And it is not. The persistent works, uh, persistence works test is passing and we are done. We are now looking at a proper, simple, but running Spring Boot application with a simple domain, a uh, simple persistence layer and exposing its, its resources over a REST API.